cleaning toilets and stuff that I never thought I would do in my life. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat, I was really, really skinny. Ciao guys and welcome back to Bad Bits. Yeah, like in a few weeks I moved here, some things happened, eventually I don't have capital. I ended up doing like immigrant, like you know, just really like these immigrant jobs like uh, cleaning toilets and stuff that I never thought I would do in my life. At the beginning of this situation it was a whole lot of things because Initially, my parents were actually you know, just like, oh, we're so scared our daughter is going to commit suicide abroad or so. They just said, we're going to send you some money to come back home. Like, but just buy you a one-way ticket to come back home. And I had a friend, very close friend, say to me, Lempia, she was still in Namibia. She was like, yeah, Lempia, it's, uh, you have resigned from your job. Trust me, if you come back today and you know four months later and you want to take your position is probably they have already gotten some bits it's just so embarrassing and probably they got somebody else already it's always the decision if you just want to come here and cry at home for a year and lose time or you stay there focus on your study and start over because eventually after two years you're going to have obviously a better qualification than what you had before and you can just start off by like other students what happened so landed in germany Beginning, everything is going well, but you know, you really miss home and stuff. Few, I think a month later, so that's like four weeks after I landed in Germany. Can I don't know anybody. I knew some, we came in a group obviously, but I, these were not like people that are close to me, like my best friends or something like that. I discovered that my ex-boyfriend, of we have been dating for so many years, and my friends also know this guy and my family stole my, like literally every cash that I've saved from my account <laughs> stole that it I mean it's a, it's a long story so it's, I mean of course it is a long story and I think that's a story for another day that I'm not even ready to share today but long story short he stole everything I discovered four weeks later I didn't have any more saving on my account I had only it was like a hundred and a million dollars left, which is equivalent back in the day to 10 euros. I would say today it's equivalent to about a hundred is about how much, maybe five euros, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Then, yeah, you're in a foreign country. Um, at the time I was making, it's not like I was making, I was getting a student allowance of about 300 or something like that. And you just discover all that comfort you thought like I'll be I have saved I have enough money to go to another country although of course I knew that I'm going to get I'm going with a scholarship but I was also just relieved to know that I have some savings because the scholarship is not enough to cover everything especially if you have worked before you want to probably have that working life so yeah everything gone 10 euros and there you go it was so stressful, so stressful. Now, that 300 was not a lot. Eventually, after some months, then the scholarship, I got the full amount, which is, I think, about 700, still was not enough. The thing is, which was really stressful, is I was studying for my second master and I still needed to go to Namibia to defend my master thesis. And I knew that I wasn't going to make that money from the scholarship. Thing that I was getting made a decision you know what I could not even speak German then I I mean not even a good morning or anything maybe I knew thanking her good morning but that's it that's not enough to get you a job so but I was like determined I'm just going to do like normal immigrant jobs you know collecting bottles at the bank or whatever I ended up doing housekeeping in one of Berlin's most famous five-star hotels First day of the job, very, very difficult. It was, every day was difficult, but the first day usually more difficult than the other. Stressful, and I can't even, I cried so many nights during that time. I really cried because it's like, 
I had my money and I worked for so many months. I worked for maybe a year and a half. I never even used my money on anything like enjoyable. I was like, I'm working, I'm working, I'm saving and I'm just focusing on getting my masters and then also getting more educated and at once everything was gone. Yeah, housekeeping, housekeeping. But yeah, I was housekeeping, you know, like the girls, the, the people that always knock me when you sleep in the hotel, we come around, just, housekeeping, housekeeping, you scream, housekeeping, housekeeping. <laughs> I was doing like that. It was very, for me, it was very stressful because I feel like this is something I would have never, ever done if I hadn't lost my savings. I would, there, would, there would have never been a need for me to do that. So it's only because he stole my money, then I needed to do this. But at the same time, looking, if, if I think about the experience I had there, it was very difficult, but it made me really stronger after that. It made me really strong, really, really strong. And I was like, I'm ready to create my dream life in this country. I was, I, I, was, I was like really determined, especially towards the end of my master. I'm not going home, going to do a PhD, and I'm ready to start a life. Whether it's going to be in a movie, but first, I know after this master, I'm going for a PhD. No more looking back because obviously I lost already my saving. I have to start a new life and move forward. Now, the thing with the housekeeping, it was also labor intensive. It's one of those jobs that's usually just done by immigrants. Like, it's usually Asian people. Oh, African, gotta be honest. It's mainly Asian or African. You go there, we, I used to go early in the morning. Early in the morning, early in the morning, I would say, I think it was about sometimes 2 a.m. or 4 a.m. You wake up because you have to, yes, you wake up, you have to make it to Berlin. When the train was, everything was working well, I think 4 a.m. was okay, but when there was no constant train connection and maybe you have to use buses to am or so just to make sure that you get to work on time then you get there to a boss who i mean have no respect obviously for employee most of the bosses that um work in the cleaning department they don't respect their employees it is just very frustrating because i was there i want to give my hundred percent i had to give my hundred percent because i definitely wanted the money especially I, on my mind all the time, I was just thinking, there's no way I'm going to miss my thesis defense just because I don't have money to travel home, defend my thesis, and come back to continue my studies. And of course, if I couldn't defend my thesis, then they would also not give me your permission to graduate. I was going to work for that flight ticket whatever way. If I think um, the, uh, the the flight ticket back in the day was about 600 euros, cleaning the rooms was 3 euros per room and I was only working during weekends. Just to some how many rooms I needed to do to make sure that I had. Obviously, yeah, you wanted to have maybe at least an 800 to make sure that I could go home whenever the professor say, oh, we have a week, show up here, defend, and you're ready to go. The good thing is that there were also some Africans who were just helping, you know, very nice to me, helping and saying they would get all the instruction and then they had been working there for a longer time and then explained to me everything in English. Then, you know, of course, also helped me. Can you share with me some tricks on how to clean the fast, as fast as possible? And it was very difficult the whole day, standing up, just moving from one, I mean, there was no lunch break. No, there was no lunch break. The whole day with your, your cart, I don't know, wagon, full of towels and bathrobes or whatsoever, from one room to another. Maybe you have two people or three, floor, three people on one floor. If you're lucky, you would go to a room where maybe the guest felt very special and they had left a tip for you. A 10 euro back in the day would just be like everything. Like, oh, 10 euro. Oh, amazing. I mean, I was doing housekeeping, so a 10 euro obviously is like three rooms. And three rooms, I'm saying, three rooms are already one room, maybe 30 minutes. So three rooms is already mm -hmm, good. As a bonus, as a bonus. 
and yeah that was very difficult i cried pretty much every i would say every single day i was just crying also talking to my mom i didn't tell my mother that i was doing house cleaning because i think my mother would have definitely say you are coming back home you didn't go there for housekeeping you went there to study and you're coming back home i, I just didn't want to give her to put that stress on her so i didn't tell her that i was I just said, you know, mom, I'm doing some student jobs. I got some student jobs. Really nice. I'm enjoying this. It's a nice experience. She probably think I was working in an office. <laughs> Didn't say nothing about that. And But she knew, obviously, that I had lost my savings to my ex-boyfriend. What If I look at it now, I think it's not a lot of money. But everything is always relevant it's your first job and it's all your savings my salary was also not so high just my first job after finishing my degree and if i think about it probably i was saving about 60 percent of my salary and all that was taken away from me just like that i mean i used to go i literally if there's anybody who know me on this channel who have seen me when i used to work for unam i used to have i would say like two jeans only and maybe four different t-shirts and a pair of um how are they even called like this waterproof shoes that i would wear every single i was saving and study like i was really just focused on two things save and study the difficult part i think when something like this happened to you in a foreign country shock just because you are in a new place you don't know people you don't know where to go you don't even know really who to talk to it's weird that you just meet people a week ago or two weeks ago and you're like oh this is my problem i'm crying because it's just weird so i didn't have so much of that support of course i tried to share because if i didn't share probably that would have also killed me try to share but it, it was not as relieving as if I had my best friends, like people that I've known for 10 years from primary school, from high school there that we can just discuss with them. Maybe just probably they would have helped me just relax a bit. So the only person that was really always there for me, my mom on the phone, obviously, and a friend of mine who was studying in the, in the USA back in the day would just be like on Skype all the time. But it's, it was difficult. That year was so difficult. Like, you know, like when you're in a stressful situation, like time is just now moving, not moving. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I was really, really skinny. Ah, oh, it's just time. So I also couldn't really have fun. I was kind of trying to have fun. I would go to university parties and stuff, but still you like at the party, like, oh my goodness, my problem is stress. And, and. I think I'm not somebody who know how to deal with stress very well. So when there's like something positive, in most of the cases, I always try to focus on the positive side of life. And I keep my focus there. But when I land in a, in a, in a negative situation, something very depressive, something very, just something that doesn't make me happy, then I'm like ice cream under the sun. I just melt and I don't know how to get out of that hole. It's very difficult. Like my thought go on this side of the spectrum that I don't like and then you just stuck there. Very difficult. And my mom, my mom was there. And sometimes God just work in amazing ways, unexpected. I did that for about maybe four months. And then I kind of like, okay, I'm ready. I can actually cut go home if the professor called me anytime and eventually they say no you actually don't need to 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 visually come here and defend we can do some skype stuff or also because you have already done some courses and your courses we're fine we can do some skype in kind of skype interviews or discussion and that should cover for that and that was very relieving when I got that new, I was like, okay, that's amazing, we're leaving. But I didn't want to just be a quitter, like, I quit my job. Because that's, I was like, okay, I'm going to anyway continue going to the job. It didn't last for long. I think I went for another two or three weeks. Then, it's not like I felt like I didn't need any, any more. But it's at, your back, at the back, it was already at the back of my mind, like, okay, I don't really need this. So... And it's not like the manager treated me 
worse than before. They were always bad. They were really bad. But then I, I became less terror. Like, I was not going to accept any bullshit anymore. I was like, I'm out of here if any simple mistake, I quit. Yeah, so as usual, the manager come around throwing things like everything you've done, you have to repeat it also because I think you're new. They always underestimate you and yeah. And then come around one day saying like, it just, the thing that this lady said to me was interesting. And that day I was like, I'm over this thing. I'm getting my master's. I just need to get through this two years, finish my master's and my scholarship. I don't need to go home right away on any, like this emergency thesis defense stuff is now over. I can just go stay at the university, maybe cry until this is all done and then move on. So the, the lady who was the supervisor, the cleaning supervisor came around and was like, Oh, Lempi, you are cleaning, like, you know, you have been cleaning this room for so long. Even my five-year-old daughter can clean a room faster than you. I had to say, what? I'm done. And I walked out of there. I was done. I was done. And I, I, I asked Mrs. Ashley, I did text my friends, like, okay, guys, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. After a year of always complaining, crying, being sad, one time my mom, I was talking to my mother and it was really like, you know, Lempi, it has been 12 months. Now, it's time to make a decision. Do you want to be, continue crying for the rest of your life? Or you just want to get over this and start a new life? And, you know, my mother is also sometimes a very straightforward person like I am and was also like, you know, for 12 months I've also been there always to hear you know support you if you need somebody to talk to and there but I, i'm not going to be crying on the phone <laughs> or listening to you cry on the phone another year like I, I'm, I'm done with this we have to move on <laughs> get over this gone it's gone already you can't do anything about that just start over the thing was also she was like you know if you want to continue crying you have to be calling somebody else not me <laughs> so i was like Okay, the following weeks was like, I'm sad, but I don't know who to talk to because, of, of course, after 12 months, I was not anymore talking to my friends and that I'm sad about it because I feel like it's really stupid. But for my mother, it was always very comfort. My mother is also like one of my best friends, was like a comfort zone, we could just talk. But when she said, I'm over this, I knew that I have also to get over it and just move on. And yeah, but, you know, that is pretty much one of the really the worst time or my worst experience in Germany was during that time when I had just I didn't have resources that I have prepared but sometimes things don't work as planned and in this case for me it didn't work as planned I started not on a smooth step so to say very difficult but like one thing that I really learned in that situation time time heals every single thing like with time it becomes just irrelevant and towards the end of my picture then after some years working i'm like i don't care i do not care and and i think that's why most of the time when some minor things happen to me like interview rejection or somebody says something bad about your work you know at your working place or something like that i just or your performance at your working place is just like you know Oh, minor things. It's going to be over soon. There's always something. Tomorrow I'm going to perform, but I'm always like looking on the positive side because I know there's always, I think, I think the, the future has always something better to offer. So that's one thing I learned. Time heals everything. The other thing that was also positive from that situation that I feel like after today I still use. I was so stingy with money. I would focus so much just on, on savings. And not really putting myself first and since that situation I thought when I started working again I also spoil lengthy because I have put in the effort obviously to end these resources so that I know and when I was also a little bit more open and not any more afraid to lose money this I think most of the things there are so many things we want to do in life but most of the things 
we don't do because we always the fear of what if I lose my hard earned cash. And I think after I got that situation, I was open to do things like, you know, stock market investing. Yeah. And I was always asking myself, yeah, maybe you lose 5,000 euros but i'm like yeah what the hell i've lost way more than that before and i'm still here so i'm just i was more open and to taking risks and chances usually when people are doing um story time they'll be doing makeup and stuff i can't really do makeup i think in the future i will be just maybe doing my afro thing if you're interested in that while i'm doing a story time thing i just wanted to come here you know i have been on this YouTube journey for a while now, and I just thought from time to time it would be also nice for me to just come here, open up and share with my audience a little bit more to me. Why do I act sometimes very straightforward and very protective of myself? Because I, of course I've gone through some stuff that maybe I haven't shared before here. And this, this one was very hard. It just, it's so hard like the first time you lose every single thing but it also that this situation really made me realize you know what the most important thing in life is your life and your health as long as you're healthy you're alive you are going to make it anyway guys that was it for me today thank you so much for watching if you enjoy this like subscribe give us a comment and see you in our next video Ciao, ciao, ciao.